Hello, Probus. Eh, howdy, howdy. Welcome to But It Was Aliens. <sighs> the extraterrestrial comedy podcast hosted by two people that existed, vanished from existence, and then existed again. We are former MIBs who have brought it upon ourselves to bring you the truth. I'm your host this week, Granny Moonwalker. Oh, no. <laughs> and standing opposite me is none other than Greybeard the Grey, a.k.a. Kevin Latall. He's called himself Granny. We know we're in trouble today. We are on a mission to not only pull back the curtain on the extraterrestrial lies you've been told, but to burn the whole damn thing to the ground. Burn it with fire! Hmm... Do you recall what happened when we vanished from existence? Did we vanish from existence or did we cease to exist? I mean, I was there, but I can't remember. I can't remember anything that happened in that time. Maybe we ceased. Maybe it was like a blink. And then we popped back in. Just to pre-warn folks before we get going, Mr. Moonwalker has just shared with me before we started recording that he has had an extra shot of coffee today. Strap in. <laughs> this could go south. Now, myself, I live on coffee. I have a good free a day on a standard day. Mr. Moonwalker doesn't. He lives on pre-workout. <laughs> <laughs> he's had his pre-workout today, but he's also had coffee with an extra shot. Of coffee. Woo. He is woke right now. Fucking wired right now. <laughs> Normally the pre-workout would have worn off by now. Or not by now, but it would have worn off. But we're recording quite early today. I found that sentence confusing. So did I. <laughs> wired. <laughs> Are your heaters on? They've been on. They'll okay. be going off any second. I am warm. Yeah, it won't last. Hot. Spicy. No fire. Sultry. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to make sense to no one. <laughs> Made sense to you. <laughs> so it's June 1971. Is it though? Yes. All right. On a lovely, warm summer evening. Was it though? Yes. All right. The witness, who doesn't want to be identified. Didn't they though? Or rather, we have no clue who they are. Shall be known today as Pam. 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 Was out playing on the swings at a local park whilst their mother... Let's call her Mama Pam. Mama Pam. Was at a PTA meeting. Uh-oh. Whilst little Pam, Pam was on the swing, a glow began to fill the park. The type of glow that out of nowhere oh, no. begins to illuminate everything around you. This caused little Pam, Pam. to look up. If you're going to say Pam... <laughs> Every time I say Pam, you're going to be saying Pam a lot. <laughs> I haven't decided how long I'm going to continue <laughs> at this point. But you have said out of nowhere in your research notes. And every time you've done that, you've snuck in a picture of Randy Orton somewhere. So Randall Keith yeah. Orton. Did the Mibs just email you again? Yes, they did. Were they telling you to stop talking about Randy Orton? Probably. Nobody can know. What the hell? <laughs> Mr. Moonwalker's put a picture in the research notes. I was fully expecting Randy Orton. Uh, as it, as I started to look at the top of the image, it appeared to be swings in a playground. So I was thinking, okay, this is going to be the actual witness. It's a middle-aged man with glasses on and his legs up in the air. This is not how I pictured Pam to look. He looks like he's making this sound. Eee! Just looks excited to be on a swing. He's He's got the grimace of someone who's just sharted. 
So I did try and find the most uncomfortable looking swing picture I could find. <laughs> and clearly an adult on a swing. There is no way I'm searching child on a swing. No, no. As little Pam looked up, whatever was emanating this glow appeared to look very hot. Pam. But it wasn't giving off any heat at all. Little Pam Pam. explains that there were many little sphere shapes on the side of the craft and that these also glowed. But they glowed bright orange, similar to how metal would look under extreme heat. Mm. There was also something that resembled a swirl design that would be turning, but much slower. Are we going to have an image of this coming up? Maybe. Okay, just because I won't ask any questions, because I find it quite hard sometimes to conceptualise what things look like. Okay, then yes we do. Glorious, glorious. Carry on, wayward son. So, so you can see in the picture below, Grey Balls, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dastardly device, craft, vehicle, mechanical menace we are dealing with. I'm still expecting Randall Keith Orton. Do you hear voices in your head? Sometimes. Frequently. Okay. So from the side, it looked like a bunch of lights, I guess, for want of a better term. Mm -hmm. And then this other picture, that's looking at it from the bottom. It helpfully says bottom on it. Okay, glorious. So they look almost like fans. Has someone like made a Tears of the Kingdom device here? It is literally the, the fans from Zelda Tears of the Kingdom stuck together to some sort of stone. All right. Okay. I That certainly doesn't look man-made, or human-made, rather. Was it what you were expecting? Although you were struggling to conceptualise yeah, yeah, anything. Yeah, I, I think the it? problem was I was waiting on bated breath for you to say Pam, Pam, so that I could say Pat, Pam, after. And then I was struggling to take it in, and I struggle at the best of times to visualise things, let alone when I've got something else going on in my mind. Pam, Pam. All my energy was there. And then I started trying to recall what you were saying to put it together and it just wasn't <laughs> happening. You pammed yourself. I, I pam to myself. <laughs> Little Pam. Pam. Believed that this object, this spray, space, this spacecraft, if you will. Yeah, I will. Was the size of the park. God damn. That's a lot bigger than I realised. We have no measurements here. But remember, this is coming from the memory of a child. So the object being the size of the park makes complete sense. If little Pam started giving us proper measurements, I'd start calling proper bullshit. Pam. Fair. Little Pam watched on and continued to watch on, almost as if transfixed and caught in a spell by the swirls underneath this craft. Mm. Was this... By design. My exact inner monologue. Was he hypnotised? And did they take him in this time? Little Pam Pam. stayed in the same spot as the craft slowly left. Just stood. Staring. As he broke out of this spell, his mother was stood directly in front of him, perplexed by his behaviour. So she asked him what he was doing. He asked his mother if the meeting had been cancelled as she was back so soon, but this was not the case. She had been gone for more than an hour. Uh Uh-oh, ring the alarm. Lost time, missing time, baby. The hallmark of an abduction event. Did, 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 did she not see the mama? Did she not see the craft? PTA meeting. Yeah, but she got back whilst he was... Pam's a he? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Okay. She got back whilst... Proper for you off, didn't it? He was still perplexed. Well, I just don't want to misgender. So why would Pam have been still perplexed if the craft had have gone? Would Pam not have snapped out? Of it. Clearly not. That's unusual. 
Mm, maybe it leaves them in a trance until it reaches a certain amount or a certain distance away. Or it's time-based. They're in so, a 10-minute yeah. trance after... Yeah. It's intentionally time-based to enable a swift getaway without being detected. Or they're completely in a trance until someone snaps them out of it. Or that would run the risk of being seen. Or Pam is a right daydreamer. Or... You're wrong. (laughs) Or Pam was a little bullshitter and was trying to fool his mum and distract her from the PTA meeting she'd just been to where Pam's behaviour may have been raised. I don't... Is a PTA meeting... Parent Teacher Association. Isn't that like... Yeah, more about policies and procedures and... Rather than issues of concern across the service, but that doesn't mean he must have been like a major little shit. She'd be called there to defend Pam. (laughs) This kid was a thug. (laughs) He's a thug. He was walking around with an orange towel around his neck. Slingshot. (laughs) I'm a thug. A skateboard. It's the original Bart Simpson. I don't really see Bart Simpson as a thug. (laughs) Been watching I feel like, the wrong Simpsons. I feel like <laughs> Nelson would have been the obvious pick there if we're going Simpsons. <laughs> You've been watching the wrong episodes. <laughs> what episodes have you been watching? What the, happened? The ones where Bart's a fuck. What was Bart doing? Sticking up old ladies, cracking people in the kneecaps with his skateboard and robbing them. Yeah, I didn't catch that one. What channel was that on? Bravo? Channel 7. What channel is Channel 7? The, there isn't even a 7. What's Channel 007 these days? I have no idea. Because it's triple digits in the UK, channels. Don't they start at 1, though? 001? So, no. So there would be a 007. I think it's 101. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So there isn't a 007. Well, yeah. that's that's a shame. Damn it, Sky! <laughs> I think if it is 007, it should just constantly play yeah, Bond. Absolutely. And nothing else. Or at the very least, like, spy-related content. Be that no, just Bond. TV shows, documentaries, just Bond. Or Fine. soundtracks. Pure bondage. Just play the GoldenEye one over and over. Play the GoldenEye lift tune over and over <laughs> on repeat 24-7. <laughs> so little Pam's mother... Took them home and nothing more was said on the matter. The very next day, there was a news report of a burning weather balloon, but mm. no remains of said object were ever f- recovered. Cover up. This wouldn't be little Pam's only encounter with something strange. In a neighborhood. Although we have nothing as concrete or extraordinary as this. We do have some minor experiences where there have been stars moving in odd ways before shooting off at high speeds. And I don't mean odd as in swirling patterns or zipping around the night sky, but moving as if walking up a flight of stairs and more. What? That is weird. How can a star walk up? What? Like it's moving. I, I get it. I can conceptualise that one. Just, Good. <laughs> I don't think we've... <laughs> All right. I don't think we've ever come across that nature of movement before. Nope. That's very jolty. Like The more legitimate ones we've come across, for example, are bombing off at extraordinary speeds, stopping instantly, therefore defying laws of physics, and then bombing off in another direction at even more ridiculous speeds. Although... And then the more traditional abduction-y ones, they move down at a constant speed and lift off potentially slowly, then zip off once they're up a little way. I don't think we've ever had jagged stair-like movement. No. So I gave you a little bit of shit there for um, being being able to conceptualise it. And then I thought about it and I couldn't. (laughs) (laughs) So in my mind, there was two things that were happening. Either the stars are moving 
like a set of stairs, like that. Mm -hmm. I am now air drawing for yeah, up Greybeard. to the side, up to the side. Or yeah. they're doing that upstairs. Mm. Like the, Which is rather like than being the stairs. An arch. Like, yeah, they're bouncing like a ball yeah. upstairs. Both of which make little sense to me. Otherwise, these stars have legs. That's the only way you can see them, like, walking. Maybe it's an interdimensional chess piece so it can only move in certain directions. Or he's seeing more than one light. That would make more sense. Maybe little Pam, Pam is focusing on different stars one by one. <laughs> there's one. Oh, there's one. To the right, there's one. Several. Maybe many. Maybe many, many. Maybe many, many, many years later. Little Pam gave us another detailed picture of what he saw with a description to match. Ooh. But before we get to that, Little Pam would later be very aware of the concept of UFOs and the extraterrestrial. It is very possible that during the hour he spent allegedly truthfully gazing up at the craft, he could have been taken. But he doesn't recall anything more than standing in the park staring up at the strange craft. You've put a picture here from a movie, and I'm not entirely sure what the movie is, but I feel like I've seen this picture. Or I is have this no just... idea what the movie is. I uh, okay. just searched kids staring up into the sky, and that's what I got. Yeah, now that I focus more closely, that might not be what I was thinking anyway. I was thinking of like this prehistoric movie with like cave people, but as I look closer at this chat... I think I know what you're thinking of, but I can't yeah, think of the name Yeah, like of an it. animated film. Yep. But regardless, rude? something like that, yeah. But now that I look closer at this image, the person is wearing a vest. Or the little dino, whatever it is. But you've got the crazy little um, kid that's all on his own. And he befriends mm. the green Diplodocus, mm. I think. That's the one. Well, either way, we've got a kid staring up at the sky. That's completely killed my trail of thought. <laughs> So did Pam get fixated on UFOs because of this experience? We are led to wonder. Don't know if he's fixated as much as very aware that UFOs are now a thing in the mainstream. Many, many years later. Mm. Many, 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 many years later. Did Pam ever undergo hypnotic regression? Not that we're aware of. Yet. I mean, I know we tend to <laughs> not necessarily be convinced by that element, but I feel if someone is struggling to access their memories, maybe that's the time it's called for. Uh, Pam can't win here, can they? <laughs> not in your eyes, no. No. I, I want to know what happened on the ship, but we don't know, and we're not going to know, I feel like. Are you going to read the little description? Oh, I hadn't gone down to your next page. Uh. The Bible talks about an angel like a... I can't read that word. Shed? Looks like a wheel within a wheel. Okay, a wheel within a wheel with eyes all around it. Wherever the eyes went, that's where the Spirit of God went. I'm not trying to claim the credit... Is, craft. The craft is biblical. How can you read this handwriting? It's almost as bad as mine. That's how I can read it. I've not read enough of your experience. <laughs> I've not tried to claim the craft is biblical in origin or nature. But what I saw somewhat fits the description. Just thought I'd mention it. Where did Pam write this? Clearly later on in life. I love his little stick man drawing. That's just yeah. like yours. This literally looks like something you could have done. Yeah, this is not beyond the realms of possibility here. <laughs> you might have done it. Are you Pam? Pam may be my spirit animal. So we've got another... Con well, at least Pam is being consistent with the accounts as well. That's positive. We've got this, um, the fanny machine with the four fans floating in the air. The fanny floater, I guess. Where did Pam submit this work? I don't know. Was this just Pam's diary and someone's got their hands on it? It is Pam writing to places. Unsure. So Pam has sent a letter somewhere. Possibly written to someone. I don't know, maybe a local paper or something. So Pam is 
Eva claiming that the alien craft that they've seen has been mistaken for God and or angels or that God and or angels are aliens, I guess. Not the first time we've heard that either. I feel like I need to know where this information is being submitted to get a grasp of Pam's own character. We don't know much about Pam yet. Okay. Pam. Pam. Time slip 30 plus years into the future. And we have another incident eerily similar to the one that happened to little Pam. It's February 12th, 2002. And in a small town in Oregon, another anonymous witness, let's call this one Kevin, was with her husband, Big Pam. I'm going to get really confused by this. They decided that it was time to go to bed and, you know, spend (laughs) some quality time together. Oh, yeah. Once it was all said and done, Kevin was, as she always was, laying nearest to the window. You lay nearest to the window. (laughs) I do, but it wasn't my choice. My partner likes the other side. Yes, he does. As she lay there at around (laughs) 10 pm, a strange orange glow appeared through the window. It appeared as if it was coming from their house and moving towards the wooded area nearby. Soul left her body. She had a good time. It took Kevin a minute as she lay there all flustered before she snapped out of it and woke up Big Pam from his exhausted slumber. Was Big Pam a hottie? Yeah. Yeah. It was big and strong. Kevin got game. (laughs) Something strange was truly going on outside. But due to the delay from Kevin and the tiredness from Big Pam... They missed exactly what it was. Too busy banging. Here is a picture of the window in which they saw it happen and would it appear and it would appear a pair of Kevin's panties are hanging by the window too. Great. <laughs> Those, that's a cloth. <laughs> and it's so dirty. <laughs> if you're taking this photo for evidence, surely you'd get rid of that first. <laughs> It's got a really... Okay, the window is just the window. There's not much interesting to say about that itself other than the dirty panties, as Mr. Moonwalker calls them. So you've looked at Kevin's panties. They're staring me in the face. If you put them away, I wouldn't have seen them. (laughs) That's a yes. (laughs) The reflection in the window, my first glance... I thought it was like a cardboard cutout or a photo inside the window, Mm -hmm. but it's actually a reflection of the person taking the photo, isn't it? Do you know what? I never noticed that. It's quite, yeah, it doesn't look quite as you'd expect it to. It's like off at an angle. Yeah, I see what you mean now. The the picture is colour, but the reflection is somehow black and white. That's really unusual. I don't know enough about how photography works to explain that one. (laughs) photography kevin would go on to say that she thought the craft was about a hundred feet across and barely 60 foot from their house a hundred feet across could possibly be the same size as the park that little pam was in and she could also make out a dome shape atop the craft kevin was furious that her husband big pam didn't see the object so couldn't corroborate her story They started to argue, and then they heard something disturbing coming from outside. She stopped the argument to listen and could hear crunching. The type that you would hear when something is walking through a pile of leaves on an autumn day. As they listened, closer the steps appeared to be getting. Closer and closer. To their house. Kevin turned into Yoda for a second there. <laughs> Closer. The steps appear to be getting. Mmm. Mmm. Pam. Kevin quickly closed the blinds 
and they both jumped into bed, shit scared. Then, they woke up, and it was morning. Morning it was. Taken were they? <laughs> Probed? Slabbed could they be? Oh. It's very, very highly likely. Especially Kevin. Whoa. But alas, that is not something that we find out here. No, not again. Unfortunately, there is nothing more we learn of either of these cases. So let's take a look at the science of it all before we look to the scepticism. Everybody look left. Everybody look right. There's zero fucking science here, but there... Is there anything that you feel sceptical about, Kevin the Tall? No? I can't say I'm surprised. Um, and I just want to know more about... Actually, before I ask that, was this Pam that was married to Kevin the same Pam as the first Pam? No. Two so separate Pams. Little Pam, Big Pam. Pam. How did you not get that? Well, I didn't... Because you said it's many, many years later. I, I said thought little time Pam... slip. To another incident. Yeah, 30 years or something, wasn't uh, it? But That's plenty old enough to get married and whatnot. Quite true. So we could be dealing with the same pan. You're saying there's a chance? Very minute. <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me there's a chance? <laughs> More importantly, I feel it's important for the story to ascertain as to whether Kevin was a good wife. Do you feel that Kevin is a good wife? I feel that Kevin was the best of wives. Mm. The best of wives. Cooking, cleaning, going out to work, maintaining the house, maintaining the children, giving it to Big Pam. Taking it from Big Pam? <laughs> no, giving. <laughs> Fox? Whee. Little one today. We've got Greybeard's Garden Fox is back. So, with Greybeard not having anything sceptical to say, <laughs> we shall summarise. Today we took a look at two cases which happened in Oregon and were perhaps linked. Little Pam was sat in the park on a swing whilst their mother attended a PTA meeting. A glow then illuminated the park, a strange glow which was so bright it caused Little Pam to look up. He was greeted by a glow that looked like it should be hot as fuck, but no heat came from it. Transfixed on, <laughs> Transfixed on the object, little Pam stood there in a trance-like state. When he snaps out of it, his mother is standing in front of him and questions what he was doing. He asks his mother if the meeting was cancelled, but she says that she was there for over an hour. They went home and never spoke of it again. But the next day, there was a news report about a burning weather balloon. Over the years, Little Pam has done some graphic illustrations, which we saw, and he has experienced some other odd things like stars acting like they're walking upstairs before speeding off. We then looked at the incident which occurred after Kevin and her husband got down and dirty. Kevin was facing the window. detail. What was that? <laughs> very necessary. Kevin was facing the window whilst her husband Big Pam was out cold. A strange glow then lit up the garden which alerted Kevin. Shocked by what she was seeing she wakes up the slumbering Big Pam. They argue after Big Pam was too tired to see anything and then they were stopped to be an argument when they start hearing a loud crunch outside. The crunches were getting louder as they were getting closer. Kevin and Big Pam closed the blinds and got back into bed like two scared children. And then, it was morning. I'm just saying, Big Pam was out cold because Kevin saw to Big Pam good and proper. Good wife. Kevin knows what she's doing. This ain't her first rodeo. <laughs> There's not much in this one which makes it hard to both question and believe. You've not really given me anything that I can, I think I said earlier on, ascertain either Pam's character from. I've given you 
everything that I have here. Oh yeah, you're, you're empty, but you're you're and... not giving me enough. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you've given all you can, don't mean that I'm there. <laughs> so my big pan fell asleep. <laughs> exhausted. Kevin's insatiable. <laughs> I've given you everything possible to conclude that this is aliens. Well, you you haven't, because I don't know that I can conclude that. But what I can't do either is slander the good name of Big Pam. More about little Pam. Oh, yeah, that little Pam, naughty thug. No, th- there's nothing, no, no alarm bells are ringing. I don't know where this information has been submitted to give me more. Equally, there's no corroborating evidence to give us more. So it's, it's a tough one. So, it's aliens. You want me to conclude? Yeah, like VAR, there's not enough to uh, deduce that it was... Yeah, but the, ball the, the call's got to be made first. So, and the call is, I'm same. not saying that it was aliens. <laughs> <sighs> Don't huff and puff like you're not going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Is something I would say if I was 100% on board with this being aliens, but I'm not. For, well, we don't know how old little Pam was at the time, but for little Pam to be the only person around at the time that that happened Mm. is very unlikely. Like, you're in a, what parent would just let their kid be in a park on their own? on a summer's evening i expect there to be more children yeah. there if it's the middle of summer or you're not allowing your child to be on their own in a park that's a good question of detail also this object came from above and yet we have a side view in the description <laughs> did not occur to me <laughs> did not occur to me at all um, you could only so, see it from the bottom and he knows exactly what it looks like from the side. So I cannot say that this is aliens and with Kevin and Big Pam, that could have just been a helicopter yeah, flying over anything. with a light. Yeah, The fact that we only have Kevin's word, again, we know. Reliable as it untrustworthy. is. Untrustworthy. So, yeah, for me, it's not aliens. Could have been a badger in the garden making the crackles. Of a headlight. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for joining us for this week's probe. Yeah. You can find us on all socials at But It Was Aliens. That's Facebook, Instagram. Oh, no, Twitter. Now known as X. The X Twitter. And we have a Facebook group called Extraterrestrial Towers. There you can find like-minded souls and mummy memes. Imhotep memes, not MILF memes. If you enjoy what you hear, we have a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash but forward slash forward slash but it was aliens, where for less than the price of a coffee, you can find episodes outside of the extraterrestrial, where we cover reincarnation, Mm -hmm. ghosts, Mm -hmm. pirates, Mm -hmm. Rasputin's dick, and a prince that likes pegging, allegedly (laughs) truthfully. Oh, that episode kills me. I was laughing about that for about two days after we recorded that one. Peg was like, what are you laughing at? And I was like, pegging? <laughs> I'd just like to also say quickly, um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. And now whenever I hear a podcast say, we're on Patreon, <laughs> my mind is waiting wait for them to go, dot com. And they never do. As always, uh, pegging. <laughs> <laughs> we could never release that one. <laughs> yes, we can. Well, on the Patreon, we can, but oh, uh, <laughs> not to the wider public. We get arrested. <laughs> As always, I've been the Walker of Moons, 
and he is the giant amongst ants. I am indeed. Remember, the truth is up there. Hash tag. Just like Good Prince said, fuck me in the ass.